all right so in this final part of chapter one okay which is how to set up basic emission we're going to take a look at how to animate the emission okay so we saw the basic stuff is like we can animate scale okay but let's say if you want to animate it top to bottom sideways or you know something else like that then there are a couple of ways to do it okay the first one which would probably be the simplest is uh, you can just delete stuff okay so what i'll do is i'm going to get rid of this thing i made one small modification which is i changed the font to something thicker so that uh, there's more smoke coming out. Okay, so I just changed the font to like Arial Black Regular. Okay, so what we can do is at the basic level is uh, what this is generating is just, it is generating some points, right? So I can, uh, let's make one small change. I'm going to change this to surface scatter. And let's just simulate this. So it's primarily at surface level. Yeah, I think this is okay. And let me just lower the turbulence a little. So solving, yeah, let's bring this down to 0 0.6. Okay. Yeah, I think this is good. Okay. So what you can do is I can just come in here to the pyro source and I can take a simple delete and we can set this to points and bounding box. Let's increase the size of this. And all I can do is I can just, uh, let's come in here to 24. We'll do an alt click and I'll come to around, let's say 48 and I'll just move it up. So it just deletes everything. So that's, that's what you're getting. Okay. So what that should do is that over time, our volume will just sort of disappear. Okay. So this is one way of doing it. This is the simplest. Okay, which is we can just, you know, delete the points. So if you play this and you'll see that over time, it just kind of disappears. Okay, another way of doing this, because this is technically just an attribute, we can also, uh, we can also just animate the attribute value. Okay, so what I can do is I can get rid of this delete here and I'll come back to the pyro source. And let's say if I take a box and I'm going to keep the box like, you know, there and we'll just animate this. So I'm going to take this, I'll keep it here. I'll do alt click. We'll come to, let's say, you know, 40 and I'll move it up. So we're getting this and then I can just take a mask. So we'll take mask from geometry and I'm going to mask this. So if we can visualize it, sometimes it's a little difficult to visualize. It doesn't show up. Okay. What you can do is press X. Like if it doesn't visualize directly, press X and come down here and change the attribute name to mask. And we should see, there you go. So what I can do is I can probably just sort of adjust it. Okay, so this is good. So now what I can do is I can just come down here and we have the density attribute, you know, so we have the density. I can get it of the visualize. See, now it's showing up. So for some reason it doesn't show up, like it's weird. And I can just take a wrangle. So I can take an attribute wrangle. And I can say F at density is equal to at mask. And what that will do is you'll see the mask automatically animate. Because the attribute, because the density value is now like zero where the mask isn't affecting and one where the mask is affecting. And if you go to the pyro source and press play, you'll see this. And what I can do is let's also do one thing. Let's get the box to be slightly thicker. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yep. 
yeah okay so you can do stuff like that now another thing we can do is instead of it affecting the uh, affecting the density it could we could use it to affect the temperature which might give you a very different result okay so what you can do is instead of density let's get it to affect temperature okay i think the caps lock is on so what will happen is the density will remain the way it is but uh, let me just get this a little further ahead what's going to happen is now my temperature is zero okay so which is when we play it nothing will happen and as it starts to move through you'll see smoke rising and once the box is out of it the smoke stops rising so the smoke is basically moving because of the turbulence but it doesn't rise up it doesn't rise up because you don't have any temperature in there so what i can do is let's say if we come into the wrangle i'll multiply it by say 5 so you'll get you know like a lot of smoke rising from there so if i press play yeah let me just come down here and you can hit reset simulation okay that's way too much so Yeah, let's keep it the way it is. But yeah, this is a nice way to do it. Okay. And then let's say it after this, if we want the smoke to die out, then I can just duplicate this. Okay, so this is this is an outputting a value called mask. And what I can do is I can just let's say control C control V. I'm gonna push this further ahead over here and do control C control V. This will be mask A. You know, let's plug this in and this one. We'll plug that over here. And we'll do F at density is equal to at mask A. Okay, uh, hold on. Let's. So this will have to be slightly different. So what we'll do is. Uh, yeah, to begin with, I'm going to keep it all the way up like that. Okay, let's do one thing. Let's just delete all the parameters for this. Yeah, okay. So it'll be like this. And then uh, once it comes to, let's say, 80, it kind of, you know, cuts out like that. Okay. Or, sorry, after that. Let's say 105, it does this. Okay, I think that works. So what we'll get is we'll have density in the beginning and then see so you can see the temperature moving through and then the density cuts off. So that should give you something a little more fancy. So if you play this and all of that is multiplying with the smoke. And then it dies out. Okay, so like we could try to push it in a little. Hold on, let's take this here. Yeah, so this gives you different ways to control your volumes. Okay, now as a final thing, uh, let's set up a collision. So let's say the A that it is emitting from, we want that as a collision geometry. So what we can do is there is something called as a collision source. Okay, so we'll take a collision source and you plug this in. And what it does is by default, it anime, it outputs the geometry and it also outputs a VDB. Okay, like if I take a null, then we can see the VDB. See, there you go. That's the VDB. And... Uh, all you have to do is take this and plug it into the second input, which is the collision input. So I can just take this and plug it in there. And if I press play now, it will collide to, you know, it will collide with that. So you can see it sort of stretch out around that. So you can, you can now see the shape inside. You know, which previously you couldn't like if I remove this, and if I simulate it again, 
you don't see that A forming inside. See, it's not, it's not really there. Okay. And you can have multiple collision objects like this. So if I just lower the dissipation here, and what I can do is, let's say if I also want a sphere for collision on top, so I can just take a sphere and let's say I'll just make it slightly bigger. And I'll keep it up over here and the same thing. So just take the collision source and plug it in and we can merge these two together. So I can merge this the second input like not don't take this one that's just the plane geometry it needs the vdb for collision okay so make sure that you're taking the right input and not the left one and if we simulate it now like let me just reset the simulation and press play and yeah there you go so if we look at it from top so you can see it colliding with the sphere as well And that's pretty much it. So this is how you can set up, you know, a basic smoke simulation and a look at all the various parameters that you can use to, you know, affect and modify the smoke simulation. Okay, like one thing you can do, and this is just for fun because I don't think this affects the shader itself, but uh, you have like a look tab in there where you can sort of adjust the density scale, uh, give it basic coloring, and if you have like fire, then you can sort of adjust the fire intensity and everything. But what you can also do is, and it has an option to create a matching material. So if you've set up something here, you can click this and it will actually create a shader for you. But another way to visualize this is you have something called as a volume visualize. So if you plug in the volume visualize, it gives you something more. So what you need is you need to come in here and type in your field. So we'll have the density field. See, there you go. So you have the density field and you can adjust the density, you know, scale and the shadow scale. Uh, this is just for viewport purposes. Like it doesn't really affect the, the render, but yeah, if you want to adjust the maximum minimum range, but what you can do here is just for fun. You can also like, uh, give it coloring. Okay. So if I set this to, let's say two tone, so you can actually give it some coloring or let's say if we set it to infrared. Yeah, see, so you can do like fancy things with it. Let's keep it to two tone. I think I like two tone. You can also reverse the gradient from here if you want. So now let's keep it to this. Yeah, I think this is fine. And then the one nice thing over here is that, uh, You can also color the flames. Okay, so if I set the emission field uh, to density over here and increase it, see, so you can adjust the flame color or the flame intensity. And uh, let's do one thing. Let's set this to simple grayscale. Okay, so it's just dark. And what we can do is with the flames, I can make some changes. So I can set the emission color field also to density and let's set this to two tone yeah there you go so you'll get something fancy like that see so you can get a nice looking fire and then you can start to adjust the emit range so if i take the emit range and i really bump it up okay let's set this to something more orangish yeah and then i can take the emission intensity to around 40 see there you go and at the end you can make it black like the leftmost you make it darker and here again, we can adjust the emission range as well. See, so you can sort of adjust it how much you want. Yeah, there you go. See, so that looks. So if you want to do like fancy visualization, you can do some basic, you know, visualization and then try to recreate the same colors within the, uh, within your shader. So it's a nice place to just sort of, you know, test things out and see how they look. And you can also try like different fields. So you can try temperature, but temperature doesn't really exist here. So it gives you some, yeah, there you go. This, that's fancy because the temperature sort of moves through it. It looks nice. 
let's try to make it like 80 or something oh that looks fancy yeah there you go see so you can do like interesting things with it or we can try something like velocity x or okay velocity y because it's sort of it's mostly moving upwards x won't really do much because it just there's not there isn't a lot of sideways movement yeah just adjust the range based on what you're using but yeah each one gives you a slightly different result so it, you can do something more interesting with it yeah but i think temperature looks nice with this Yeah, so even without having like a pyro simulation, you can still do some, you know, pretty fancy looking stuff. So yeah, so this is pretty much it. So this is the absolute basics of uh, how to set up a simple smoke simulation in Houdini. So the next set of chapters or the next set of videos uh, will deal with uh, pyro simulation. So which is how to emit uh, fire and then how to do an explosion. So we'll take a look at that with the next set of lessons.